I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional today. We are in Genesis chapter 21. We're looking at the birth of Isaac. As I said yesterday, this is one of my favorite passages, passages of Scripture for the simple reason that it reminds us that God is a God that keeps his word, but that he always does it on his time frame, not our time frame, as we looked at yesterday morning. I want to read verses 1 through 8 of Genesis 21 today, and then we'll get into looking at this more today. It says in verse 1, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah had bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath given me, uh, made me to laugh, so that all that here will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. So as we come into these verses, um, we saw here yesterday that Abraham was born at a set time, which reminds us that God always keeps his word and that God always works on schedule, but he is according to his schedule. Now as we come into uh, verses 3 through 5, we see the obedience of Abraham. And we see that in that, first of all, he obeyed God in the naming of his son Isaac. In verse 3, it says, Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And of course, that word Isaac means laughter. Remember back in Genesis chapter 17, and in verse 19, God is speaking to him, and it says, God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. So God had told Abraham, you're going to name the child Isaac, which means laughter. And uh, we, we saw, first of all, that there was that laugh of unbelief in Abraham and Sarah. Will we really have a child at this point in our life? Uh, Abraham being 90 years old, or, or 100 years old, rather, Sarah being 90. We haven't had a child all these years. Are we really going to have a child now? So there's that laughter of unbelief. But then later on in Genesis 21, we find that laughter of unbelief was turned into a laughter of joy and, uh, and celebration. And uh, so he said here, name the child Isaac, and Abraham obeyed God in doing so. But then he also obeyed him in circumcising the child. In verse 4, it says, Sarah circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. So once again, he is being obedient to God. Come back to Genesis chapter 17 with me. And uh, let's pick it up in verse 9. Genesis 17 and in verse 9, it says, God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man-child in your generation, he that is born in the house, or bought with money of the stranger, which is not of thy seed. So there we see very clearly that God had commanded Abraham to circumcise those of his household. And he's obedient in doing that to Isaac. Circumcision would not be easy. The little infant would cry, blood would flow. Some might even protest that the act was cruel, but Abraham obeyed, and he did it right on time. He did it on the eighth day, just as God had spoken. Now, circumcising was for the Jewish people, and it was a symbol, a sign of the covenant that God had made with them, and and, you know, some people do it today, some don't. We're not under the Abrahamic law anymore, so we don't have to. Um, but what I, what I do want you to see from that is this. When God instructs us, we need to be involved in obeying him. Whether or not it brings the ridicule of the world and those that are, that are around us, that matters not. What matters, friends, is that we are obedient to God 
and that we do that which God instructs us to do, whether it be something that is easy for us to do or whether it be something that is hard for us to do. That really doesn't matter. What matters is the fact that we are obedient to him in all things. And we see here Abraham is obedient and he continues to obediently serve God in his old age. He doesn't come to the place where he says, well, I've done my time and now it's time for other people to serve the Lord. No, Abraham served God faithfully in his old age. Notice what verse 5 tells us. It says, Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. He was at the age where it wasn't easy for him to do this. It wasn't easy for him to take Abraham or Isaac up on Mount Moriah, but yet he did that which God instructed him to do at every stage of his life. Now, with the time that we have left today, notice the rejoicing of Sarah in verses 6 through 8. There's a laugh of faith here in verse 6. It says, Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh so that all that will hear will laugh with me. This is the laugh of faith. This is rejoicing in what God has done. But at the same time, we remember her laugh of unbelief in Genesis chapter 18 and verse 12. And that word Isaac, the name Isaac, means laughter. And the birth of Isaac brought great rejoicing in the heart of Sarah. And uh, she has this laugh of faith here, this rejoicing in what God has done. And then notice her faith testimony in verse 7. It says, she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. There's her testimony of faith. I was reminded of Hebrews chapter 11. And in verse 11, of course, Hebrews 11 is a chapter of faith. And this is what it has to say in chapter 11, verse 11. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged or considered him faithful who had promised. This all happened because of faith. This miracle cannot be separated from or this birth rather cannot be separated from the miraculous power of God. The only way that this birth happened was because of God's power. And Sarah's life here is a witness to God's power. When people look at my life, is my life a witness of God's power? Does what happens in my life cause people to rejoice in the Lord? Or do when they look at my life, do they have just cause to reject the Lord and to reject his working? Friends, we need to ask ourselves that question, and we need to ask it often. What does my life witness to people, and does it cause them to rejoice in the Lord? And then we see in verse 8 that Isaac is warned, uh, weaned. According to history, a feast was in order on such an occasion as this. And we see here that Abraham makes this big feast, and the greatness of this feast shows the importance and the honor that Abraham placed on this special child that God had given to him. And friends, as we as we close our study today, let me simply say this. You and I need to be careful that we give God due honor for his great blessings in our lives. Let's not take credit for the blessings that God has given to us and for how God has blessed us. But let's give honor to where honor is due and let's praise the worthy name of our Lord and say to God be the glory, great things he hath done. Friends, it's not us, it's him. And we need to be careful that we give him the honor and that we give him the praise that he deserves and that we give honor where honor is due and that we tell people around us worthy is the name of the Lord who has blessed us with such benefits and has worked in our lives in such miraculous ways and oh friend what a blessing we have and what an opportunity we have before our world to give God the praise and to give him the glory for what he does and that we would acknowledge his good hand of working in our lives. Let's be careful to do that as we go through life to give all the honor and all the glory to our Creator, who not only made all things, but sustains all things in our lives and in this world. Have a great day.